Hello, this is Reservoir 13 by John McGregor. It's a brilliant book. Uh, his first book, uh, his first novel was called If Nobody Speaks of Remarkable Things. And I read that when it came out with my reading group. And we all thought it was a remarkable book. And we, we seldom reached consensus on a book. So this, Reservoir 13, I think is his fifth uh, publication, came out in 2017. I read it a little while after that when it came out in paperback. I think I could best start by just reading what I wrote in my own uh, review for my own benefit. I wrote, what a book. I lived in its world for two or three weeks and I was very impressed by the writing. He's back to the remarkable in the ordinary. The fictional Peak District where it's set, it felt very real. Um, and it reminded me of a number of villages that I know reasonably well. Although part of the whole gist of this book is about asking the question, how well do you really know places and people? I think it is. Um, the book's strangeness has been much commented upon. The missing teenage girl at first appears to be its focus, but then as the chapters and, and the years move on, uh, foxes' dens and insect larvae, for example, they take up as much space or more. The natural world is very strongly represented in this book. The humans um, can seem quite thinly sketched, so it's not like a normal novel in terms of deepening the kind of sense of a character. They're quite thinly sketched and they, they come and go. Uh, they grow up or maybe they die they move in and out of relationships. And they're, they're like people you view on the street, I thought. So, you know, sometimes I recognise somebody, but I, I don't actually know their name. And I, I might think I've not seen them for months. So I have those kind of uh, senses. Um, but although these people are thinly sketched and we're not told much about them, as time passes, uh, and, and this book goes across about 13 years, these people, though you don't know them well, they're familiar to you and they kind of get consolidated in your in your affections. So I, I said here that there's both an existential disinterest in all these people on the part of the author and yet also an intimate concern about them at the same time. It's such a clever commentary on our notions of community and on our sense of our own individual place within communities. But it's also about the different ways in which the human and the natural communities, the foxes, the insects, um, how much they change and remain the same uh, over the years as they cycle through the years. So this book opens with a missing teenage girl in a Peak District village in this midwinter. Um, and I'll just, I'll just read the first page or so to give you a sense of the beautiful writing. This is chapter one. They gathered at the car park in the hour before dawn and waited to be told what to do. It was cold and there was little conversation. There were questions that weren't being asked. The missing girl's name was Rebecca Shaw. When last seen, she'd been wearing a white hooded top. A mist hung low across the moor and the ground was frozen hard. They were given instructions and then they moved off, their boots crunching on the stiffened ground and their tracks fading behind them as the heather sprang back into shape. She was five foot tall with dark blonde hair. She had been missing for hours. They kept their eyes down and they didn't speak and they wondered what they might find. The only sounds were footsteps and dogs barking along the road and a faintly helicopter sound from the reservoirs. That should have said, and faintly a helicopter sound from the reservoirs. The helicopter had been out all night and found nothing. Its searchlight skimming across the heather and surging brown streams. Jackson's sheep had taken the fear and seen and scattered through a broken gate and he'd been up all hours bringing them back. The mountain rescue teams and the cave teams and the police had found nothing and at midnight a search had been called. It hadn't taken much to raise volunteers. 
half the village was out already talking about what could have happened. This was no time of the year to go up on the hill, it was said. Some of the people who come this way don't know how sharply the weather can turn, how quickly darkness falls. Some of them don't seem to know there are places a mobile phone won't work. The girl's family had come up for the new year and were staying in one of the barn conversions at the Hunter place. They'd come running into the village at dusk, shouting. It was a cold night to have been out on the hill. And on it goes. So in chapter one, you think, well, this is a, is this a kind of, if you didn't, if you didn't know about the, the book's reputation beforehand and you just picked this up and started reading it cold, and I don't know if you would, but if you did, you'd think, well, is this a murder mystery? You know, it's a, it's a fairly conventional uh, kind of opening, I mean, in horrific circumstances, but, um, you know, it's like an, any number of detective stories, as it were. But then each chapter in this book, and there's 13 chapters, uh, begins with a new year turning. So if I just open it at random, if I can, here we go. So this is chapter nine. Um, at midnight, when the year turned, and each chapter starts with that phrase, at midnight when the year turned, Rowan found Lindsay on the dance floor at the village hall and kissed her while old Lang Syne was sung. Rowan said later that they'd both been as surprised as each other, but in truth, he'd been hoping that something would happen again for a while. Okay, so if I, I take another chapter, let's, take, let's go even further on. Chapter 12. At midnight, when the year turned, there were fireworks going up from the towns beyond the valley, but no one in the village even lifted their heads to look. The fires from the two previous New Years had made people nervous. The village hall was empty and people were standing out by their barns and buildings, half a dozen police officers patrolling and the fire brigade on notice. By half past the hour, the tension had eased. A few people set off their own fireworks and a belated old Lang Syne was sung. And that's it really. The, the years go on turning. I, I don't want to spoil anything, but the missing girl isn't found. And she slowly slips from her kind of prominent position in the chapters. Life moves on. And, and this strange business about the characters coming in and out. We watch a group of teenagers go from being you know, kind of in their early teens at the local school and then we watch them move away, most of them move away to go to university and college. They swear they'll be friends forever, but they drift apart. And uh, some come back to the village to visit, some come back for longer, and some don't come back. And, and it's, yeah, it, it is a very strange book. It is, it, it, it's like a novel, but it's not a novel. And I think... It's not a book to go into with any expectations that it's that it's a story or that it's a, it's not a detective story, or that it's um, a comment on the natural world or it's about village life. I think it's tempting to 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 be drawn into thinking it's one of these or something like that, but it's none of them. That's what's so brilliant about the book. Really, is it's not like anything else that I've read, um, and yet it. Well, I don't. I, I mean, I, I'm familiar with the landscapes where I live, which is, uh, you know, near where this book's set. But I don't think you have to be. I think those moorlands, um, the reservoirs, the streams, the weather, the the inclement weather, um, but also the sunshine and, and people growing up, and it's all matched in with the natural world. So, you, as I say, you know, you've got mammals and even insects. He spends a long time talking about an insect and. Uh, uh, and and, a, and it's pupa or whatever they're called, you know, on grasses. And so you, you feel you kind of, you're in the rhythm of life really. And, and we, the people, uh, both the fictional characters and, and us readers, we're all kind of part in that turning of the years. It's really, really good. But I know some people don't like it. If you like my videos, could you tick the like under the videos please because it will help me promote my channel. Thank you.